What's up, everybody? It's Quinton from Hunters of Light, and uh, today we've got uh, Martin Dudley, Martin Dudley Barber, uh, and combinations of uh, of that. Uh, I think um, he's got a stage name. He's got a normal name. <laughs> I've, I've, I've 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 called him both, and today we've kind of made sure that we make or we cover all the bases. So um, Martin is going to be talking about uh, the, the the sort of creative process and um, and and how you. Uh, you know, can flex your creative muscle, etc. So, um, and and one of the things that we spoke about uh, before we we went live was uh, the, the 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 debate that I'm sure will 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 start. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe not. This group is actually quite cool. We don't have um, debates that rage either way. But um, the 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 discussion of of whether uh, adding composites is is photography or or if it's just fine art or etc. And I, I think that. You know, there's um, you know, if even if you're doing advertising photography, composites are are part of that process. You know, you you may be shooting a big group of people, and you you know, uh, a shot in the front is uh, of someone is is going to be shot separately to one that's at the back, but because you both need them both in focus, etc. So you're always using composites and and mats, etc. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's um, it's it's uh, it's a debate that will continue to to go around, um, and I think um, debate is healthy uh, as long as it's uh, kind constructive and pleasant um, but yeah i think um uh, let's uh martin let's uh, i'm going to hand over to you and then uh, you can take us through your your process and maybe start off by just giving us a bit of an indication as to what you've been doing um during lockdown um you know hi quentin thanks so much and, and like i said to you just now is um you're doing an amazing effort here for photography in south africa and i think worldwide there'll be people who watch this um i mean i've been contacted from all over so Guys, uh, uh, Quentin, thanks very much for what you're doing to the contribution of photography. Um, yes, yeah, so what have I been doing in lockdown? Um, I've actually been working. This is not my full that time occupation. It's just a passion. It's something that I really do. Um, I've always tried to turn passion into financial turnaround, but that hasn't worked. So I'm <laughs> more in marketing. You guys know the poor photographers at the present moment are suffering badly. And uh, at the, you know, during this time, you actually say to yourself, Thank God I didn't get into photography doing it because, you know, the, uh, so, so I'm actually in marketing. A part of my division that I work with is in media. So I do get a chance to flex my muscle with, with taking photographs and, and, and working it in that particular side. Um, I've been a photographer for, for, for most of my life. I've done easy three, 400 weddings. Um, and I still survive. So you can see that. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and a lot of product shoots. Yeah, I've survived it. <laughs> Won't do it again. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I, so I'm in marketing and, and of course, um, that's also taken a big knock because my shareholders and everybody who calls on me says, where's the numbers? And I'm saying, and they said, don't use COVID as an excuse. So yes, it's been difficult, but we, we've m managing to survive, I think, like everybody else out there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's, it's a case of, um, you know, uh, assessing what the situation that you're in um, and finding a way to, to make it work. Uh, you know, I think everything has yeah. everything has changed the way that uh, that marketing is going to be done. I mean, the way that meetings are done now, um, yeah. it's all uh, you know uh, Zoom or uh, Teams, etc. So, um, you know, I think it's and and I think it's I think it's good because um, you know specifically from a meeting point of view, I don't have to now drive an hour to the meeting, uh, have the meeting, and then drive an hour back, uh, back. to to chat Correct. to a client. It, it sort of forced us to uh, to to reassess things, and I, I think that uh, for a lot of things, it's going to be. Uh, really cool, um, and I, I think for a lot of photographers, um, they've they've been forced to reassess where they are and what they want to do and, and how they how they want to either change or or not change and freak out. So um, yeah, I think uh, you know we've got to make the best of it and, and make it work gotcha. by ourselves. Sure, sure. No, super. So that's the way that's the way it is. It's it's just that we have to adapt or die. That's it. And we've got that's to adapt. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, as I say, I'm I'm really excited to uh, to hear what uh, what you have to say. So whenever you're ready, we can share your screen and, and go for it. Hundred percent. Let me go put you over there. I've got two screens, so it's and I'm just going to say share screen. You tell me if you if you're seeing it. Um, and say so share. All there right. we go. Perfect. All right. So thanks, Quentin. Thanks everybody out there. And, um, today we we get into most probably the world of creative photography. And what I'm want to try urge all of you to do is I'm not here to sell what I do. I'm going to try to do two things. I'm going to try to go through some of my images 
while I'm busy talking to you about the creative process and, and that type of thing. And um, what I um, would like to first, there is a, um, uh, a thing I need to warn you about. Um, and you need to take note of before we even go any further is that a lot of images were harmed during the making of my images. Okay, so if you are <laughs> sensitive to chopping up a photograph and, and getting something out of it, then this is not going to be the show for you. <laughs> um, so where do I put this all together? Um, first of all, like I said, is I'm not a full-time photographer. I use a lot of my creative ability in the work that I do. Um, and I tend to look at things completely different from, from many people that I've met. Um, my image that you see here simply came about by my wife laying on, a, on, a, on, on, on the bed. And late one evening, I couldn't sleep and her cell phone went off. And, and the backlight from the cell phone lit up her face like a room light. Now, please, everybody, this is not my wife. Okay, so I wish it was. So, but what happened was an image was imprinted into my mind and I had to reproduce that. So I, I sort of made a mental note of it and saying, that is a shot which, which maybe be quite different. Even the posture and how I've, I've managed to get the model to lay completely back was something that was created in my mind's eye. Now we say in the mind's eye, I believe that photos are taken long before we ever push the shutter. They created in our mind. Um, commercial photographers will, will know that. They come, they get a brief, they put it through their mind, and then they apply what they're going to do long before they actually even arrive on set. They, they've got some type of visual idea. So where do I start with this? Well, this particular image of mine, um, to give you an idea, is I, I tend to call myself more conceptual uh, or conceptual type of photographer because I come up with concepts in my mind and, and build them up. And what actually happened with this was <clears throat> I was driving in um, the Pilansburg Game Reserve and there was these rhino in the road um, and they were actually having a bit of a tussle. And we came to, um, I came up to this point and there was about 50 to 100 cars. So it was a long procedure. And slowly each car drove past these two rhino. And as I passed, the rhino was so close to my car. And I, as my bumper went past him, I measured his actual length in my car, which is a GTI at the time. And from his, uh, from his nose to the back of my car, that rhino was that big. Now, guys, I'm not a nature photographer. I don't get into nature much. But I couldn't believe the actual size being put next door to my car. And as I drove up the road, I thought, I know what's going to happen tonight or on Saturday when I have my bra and my buddies are all with me. And I'm going to say, you're not going to believe how big this rhino was in Pilansburg. And Yaku is going to turn around to me and say, Martin, that's nothing. You must see the one I saw over there. <laughs> and then you cut out. It sounds going to like say, a fishing nothing. story to was, me. Yeah. And, um, but wasn't that what legends were born from? Is everybody boasting one bit? And I got to thinking, and this is in the process of driving um, my car, and I got to thinking is, let me create urban legends. Let me try to create a scene um, of how our, our culture, our history in, in this country was. That I mean, we've got the best wildlife that roam our, our, our fields. And that. So what I then did was I started photographing different tribes, African tribes, in this case, the Sutu. And, went, and, and by the way, when we do co uh, composites, you've got to understand that you've got to get low in front of this elephant. And every bit of these photographs that you're going to see is my work. They are photographs that I've gone out specifically to take. In this case, this, this process took me about a month and a half to, to put this image together as far as grabbing all the images. Um, there's something like eight to 10 photographs here, skies, clouds, smoke, all sorts of things to get it together in order for me to tell my story and the way I see that. Um, then I thought, wait, let me, let me make a series of it. This one is called Izurafu, or African Giants Izurafu, who, which actually stands for the one who sticks his head above the trees. And in this case, I'm using a Zulu, which is there. The background is from Plettenberg Bay, um, all the forest out there. Uh, the foreground is from, uh, is from a mountaintop shooting down onto trees. And, and all of that put together carefully so that I could tell the story of the African Giants purely a fantasy in my mind. So in other words, I see photography in a lot of cases is taking photographs of the way I see things and, and the way I look at things. 
but don't we all as photographers? And, and I'm going to get into that now, now for you. This one is, is part of that whole series. There's about six of them, and I don't want to bore you with all of them. And this one is the lion with um, the guy saying, Corsa. And when I got him to, to come and beat his drums and everything, he wore this red um, thing. And I thought, no, he looks more Ethiopian than anything to me, you know. But what I'm just trying to say is this mythical thing where people in back, down, back in the days would actually believe in these huge mythical animals, which would actually be their gods or whatever. And it's a lovely story to tell. And that's what brings me to this point is, you know, my mom used to always sit back uh, when she was very old and she said to me, oh, it's terrible what happened to Sonia. And I said, who the hell is Sonia? I know she was on TV and her husband left her. And she'd actually take a story that was on television and, and think of it as real. Don't we all do that? Uh, Game of Thrones, it's not real. But what? It's not real? World. Game of Thrones is not real? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, right. and we, we live this, this, this idea. But then when you go buy your Toyota Bucky, is it the one that was on the ad for the Dakar Rally? So we do live in a world of make-believe. We, we live in all of that. Um, uh, uh, my, my wife wears makeup. I mean, when she takes off the makeup, she's a different woman. That's not the woman I married. I married the woman with makeup. <laughs> so we live in this, in this world. And that is partly what I'd like to speak to you about, is this thing we call the creative process, or I call it the creative process. And, and what that is, is the most valuable part of kit you're going to have in your camera bag. And that's not the camera. That's not the lens. That is not the... the, the anything to do with camera kit, but yet we forget about it. And that is, is your creative process. Who are you? Because when, isn't it strange that you'll, you'll see somebody that you like their particular photography. And as soon as an image comes up without even seeing the name, you can identify whose photo it is. And I see that in commercial photography all over. And I've seen it my life over is a minute an image comes up, I could literally identify that image by its author. Yet, his name isn't even on it. And that is because we are seeing the signature of that particular artist in his work. And, and that is where I'm trying to get to, is that so much of us are running around photographing everything we can. And what we are losing out on is that you've got to try to get yourself that signature. Not, and I'm not saying let's do all your work the same. You'll see mine is very diverse. I have many different parts I love. My favorite of all favorites is black and white. There is nothing better in photography than black and white. For me. But what I'm trying to get to is that you need to develop this creative process. And each one is your fingerprint. They are uniquely different. And once you start seeing beyond what's in the viewfinder and start shooting the way you want to shoot, it changes things remarkably. Okay. So just a, 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 quick, uh, yes. a quick question there, Martin. Um, uh, Coco Van Oppens is asking if you, um, if you do lessons. And I, I think that I've seen on one or two posts that you do do, uh, you know, whether it's mentorship or uh, some online training, et cetera. Maybe just uh, go into that uh, for a bit. Yes, certainly. Um, what I do do is I, I call it lessons if you want to, but more coaching. Um, I teach people editing completely. Um, I, I do, uh, and by the way, the editing is not my editing. It's editing designed through thousands of different tutorials that I've watched and books like you see that I've read. And so I try to first, when I say coach, I don't want other Martin Dudleys out. I want to try to develop you or as the photographer, your style and try to find editing processes which you would like and then let you out to the wind. And a lot of my clients have been with me five, six years. Um, I have clients in the UK. I have clients in, um, in, in Brazil. I know it's, it's difficult to talk to them. Um, uh, Dubai, uh, the USA, I was on, on, a, on a class just this, this weekend um, working with people. And, and yes, so what I do do is, uh, of course, remember, I do have a day job. I have a full-time day job. I also go take my photos. So I, I, I try to schedule different appointments and we do it like this on Zoom. Or uh, I used to do um, a lot of them in groups, but that's going to be gone, I think, for the next year and a half. But yes, um, that's what I do. And you can certainly contact me and we can, we can talk and see how I can, how I can accommodate and help you. Fantastic. Now, I think we'll do that. We'll chat about that at, uh, at the end. Yeah, no, super. So here's some photography facts. And number one, is what is in your mind comes through your lens. And what I'm trying to say there is you photograph what you enjoy. 
for example, uh, we've had these two shows of yours, Quentin, um, I've forgotten the names, but the one was on whales, is that particular photographer loves whales. And through photo photographing his whales, he's developed a whole industry around it. But he knows what he loves. And now if I suddenly go and say to him, come with me, let's go do street photography, he most probably would hate every moment of it. Because in his mind's eye, living at the coast, loving whales, that's what he shoots. The lady with, your, with the horses, she actually said in the beginning of her talk about um, she was in wildlife and then she found about horses. And what is in her mind and in her style, that's what she photographs. So... You know, one has to understand is that we need to adapt our creative process around what is in. Now, I'm not saying genre. I'm not saying if you go and shoot um, people or, or that, that becomes a genre. No, I'm saying what is in your mind comes out of your lens. And we all are working to do one common thing. Every photographer in the world wants that perfect shot. And what I'm saying is that there is a process to get that. And, and I'll go through these now. Fact, this is fact. This is actually last year's stats. Believe this or not, 350 million photographs are, are uploaded onto Facebook every single day. It's, day. it's, it's then, such an amazing uh, statistic. You, you actually can't believe that that's, uh, believe. that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And then almost 9 million photographs separately on, 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 um, on uh, what's it? <laughs> Instagram. Um, on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. But look, they could be duplicated. That, you know, you could put the same photograph on 10 different groups on, on your group. Yes. But what I'm trying to say is if we took, I think I worked it out once, 35 top of the range SLR cameras, put them on repeat shutter, 10 frames per second, Okay, over 24 hours, that would equal to 350 million photographs. So you can imagine the speed of processing going into Facebook. That is just images. The, the thing is this, is what makes your image stand out from those images? And that is the most important part of your camera. It's actually what carries the camera pack. It's you. People want to see you in your work and the way you see things not necessarily the item that you photograph. Now, I'm not saying, guys, do me like what I do, chop up images and put them all together. I'm saying you need to create and shoot what you shoot, okay, and, and what you enjoy in such a way that people can identify you with it. That is what fine art photography is. It's more about identifying who the author is more so than what the photograph is about. And I'm going to jump through that for you. So I think the, the one to... thing there, sorry to, to interject there, the one yes. thing there is that it's, um, especially for, for photographers that, um, that have just started, uh, you know, yes. when, you, when you say to them, uh, you know, you need to develop your, your, your own style and, and way of doing things, it's, it's something that is completely foreign to them. And it, I, I mentioned it in one of the presentations before, um, I approached um, Michael Lewis uh, and, and was chatting to him saying, listen, I want to do this photography thing. And and uh, he said exactly that, you know, you need to, you know, to find your, your style and, and your voice. And style. I, I had no idea what he was talking about. I thought, well, style, uh, black and white, uh, a lot of color. You know what I mean? It's, 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 exactly. it's something that was completely foreign to me. And, and it, takes, it takes time to get to Ooh. a point where you start realizing and understanding. And, 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 and once you get there, then you really start working on, on, on where it is that you need to go because you finally understand it. Yes, exactly. And this creative process, we are all on that road. It, it doesn't actually end because at a certain point of time, you get to a place where you say, I I'm going to apply this to that. And you slightly change and, and you move around. But finding that style is a, is a long period of time and, and working to it. And I'm hoping that this brings some, 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 some clarity to you on how to do it. So here I'm walking in a shopping center. And uh, it's just down the road in the Glen. And this old guy is walking towards me. My wife is next to me. She says, Martin, please, no, don't do this. And um, <laughs> you could obviously see what? it coming. I've seen this before. <laughs> she sees it coming. Before I even spoke to this guy, my creative process went in, into play. I walked up to him and I said, sir, I've got to shoot you. I've got to get you into this year. And he's a... Afrikaans guy, and you can see by his face, sort of aggressive and quite a hardish guy. And what are you talking about? And he, he gave me a say. Actually, he got one leg. 
And his son was with him. And eventually I conned them into coming in for a, for a family shoot. And the whole purpose was it. And when I looked at him, there are two possibilities of shooting him in my creative process. One is Father Christmas. And the other one is Leonardo da Vinci. But guys, it's a portrait shot. It's a shot of a man with a paintbrush. And immediately it associates to certain parts of our brains and, and that type of thing. I could have put him there and taken an ID photograph of him. But my creative process comes into play and, and, and gets that. What I'm trying to say to you is we've got to change our mindsets in, in photography to stop taking photos of things, rather take photographs about things. And if you're looking, if you're a macro photographer or a, a nature photographer, don't take a photo of a lion. Take a photograph about a line. And I know what you're all saying is, but I'll get to you. I'll get to you, Nana, the nature photographers uh, and the bird photographers. So creativity is not reserved for the select, select few. It's in all of us. We are born creative. We are made creative by the person who made us, the creator. And we have all got it. Yes, certain people are born with it in more abundance than the others. And a lot of people have to dig really deep to be creative. But like my wife hates photography. Well, not hates, she, she's not interested in it at all. You know, we have to have two holidays. I do photo holiday and she wants to go do her thing. She crochets and she, she knits. But that's her creative outlet. That's the way she explores. We are photographers. We love taking photographs. So what makes it different and why you can't maybe tap into what it is is it's just that you do you're not in tune with what inspires you you have to find what inspires you and and i don't mean that in i'm talking about in your genre if you're a nature photographer find somebody that inspires you look at images and 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 work with that and then you will become that so that is important and was an important fact in my life as photography. I had all these specific photographers which I'd follow and look at and inspired by their work and they actually created my own creative process. This was, and people laugh at me when I tell them the story about the shot. This is a total fluke, Quentin, total fluke. And they're all saying that it went on to win the top black and white uh, photo in China. And somebody wrote to me, you know, I got letters from China, all in uh, their language, and I had to use Google Translate to actually <laughs> translate all these letters. And one of the letters was, they said to me, do you know that there are close to 70 million photographers in China? Sure. That is more people than what is in, on the, on, in South Africa. Imagine every South African running around taking photographs. And yet you think that a South African won their black and white con uh, competition, and, um, and it was a fluke shot. We won't tell them, so hopefully we're not broadcasting <laughs> to China, yeah. otherwise I'll get their, their award back. They, they, they actually um, accommodated me for five days to go to China. I just couldn't make it because of work uh, things, and, and that was the prize to get to China for five days and the, the whole award ceremony and the whole thing like that. What actually happened with this shot, I was, went to the place, you'll see another photograph, um, which is just outside the Tutsi Karma Forest near Plettenberg Bay. And there are these wild horses there. I didn't go there for the wild horses. I just went for a holiday and I found these wild horses and I couldn't shoot them. As soon as you come close to these horses, they, they skedaddle into the forest. And the farmer there said to me, if you come early in the morning by the lake, so here it is, pitch dark, my headlamp on, slowly get to this place where there's, there's this water hole. And this, um, waited there, waited there, and I could hear the horse about what, and the sun started to come up, and now I could see them, and as I moved down, this stallion came running past me, so it's semi-dark, and da-da-da-da, multiple shot, you know, seven photos, and yeah, give yourself a high five, look on the back of my camera, and I hadn't adjusted my ISO, so I was sitting on ISO 100, so I've got seven perfectly pitch black photographs. There's little dots and marks. <laughs> well, you, you did one black and, and white, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so I went, um, went, I was actually going to delete them, and this will be a lesson for never delete a photograph in camera. Um, and I went back, and a couple of months later, I was going through my photographs, and I noticed these six, seven, eight uh, black photos. Well, why haven't I deleted those? Open up, what the hell was I doing here? And as I pushed my exposure in, um, in, in, in camera raw or in, in, in Lightroom, this image appeared. So all that happened was it managed to capture that. Yes, there were other specks and dots and pieces which have been all removed in order to give me that particular shot. 
the thing about being creative, the number one thing is you've got to give yourself permission to explore yourself. It's not a factor that everybody would turn around and say, oh, look what you're doing and you're copying this and you do composites and you do this. We feel that way. We tend to be wary of that. You've got to give yourself permission to actually go and shoot. A lot of commercial photographers, which I've helped with the editing, have said to me, we don't get a chance to actually go out and photograph what we want to photograph. And that is sad because what actually happens is you, what you're shooting is what your client wants. But actually inside of you, you're sitting there and you've sort of been, if I can use the word prostituted in a sense, that sometimes the wife and family say, oh, dad, not the camera again. But what you've got to do is you've got to give yourself permission to go into your zone and photograph what you want to photograph. And I, I, think, and there's, also, I think there's, yeah, two, there's two points there. The, the, the one is... Um, I can absolutely agree with that from a, from a commercial photography point of view. Um, you know, if, you, if you're shooting weddings on the weekend, you're shooting commercial stuff during the week, you don't want to pick up your camera um, no. you know, no. uh, for, for, for just anything. Um, you almost sort of equate it to, to being work as opposed to having a creative outlet. Exactly. And I think that's, that's, that's something that we... Uh, it's funny, I sometimes say that uh, when, you, when it's your hobby, it's the best time because best. you've got no clients, You've got complete freedom and you're just going for it. But then, then and that's, that's, what happened, that's what happened with me. Is yeah. I've done 400 weddings. Um, I've, oh, I can't, I, I've lost count. Um, and, and what I found was this beautiful passion and love for photography, which I have, was actually being depleted and I wasn't shooting what I wanted to shoot. But what I also mean by this is a lot of times you say, I don't want to be different. I'd rather just do this. Don't worry, it will be a process. If that's what you like to do, do it. Even if it's a style which doesn't look good. And all. Now, I know what a lot of the guys are going to be saying out there, Quentin. They're going to say, but Martin, I'm a portrait photographer. What is, more, what is creative about a, a young woman, beautiful, with a, with a G-string on, and, and, and I'm photographed. What more creative can I be? And... I'm going to use some amazing photographers as examples, not me. Is let's look at Lee Jeffries. I mean, very simple portrait photos, black background. And what, while everybody was out shooting glamour and all the most beautiful models in the world, Lee Jeffries is one of the top portrait photographers. Because what he's doing is he's capturing stories. He's not taking photos of people. He's taking photographs about people. And he's created his creative style and, and his creative process. Darkening the backgrounds, not pulling them into studios and shooting them literally on the streets. And he's become world acclaimed for actually doing something slightly different. Who would have ever thought that this model on the left was beautiful? But Lee Jeffries makes it a beautiful story. And, and that is the reason is he's taking people's stories just by their wrinkles on their faces. And he captured that. And, and what are people doing is people are seeing his work and immediately identify. As soon as you see an old person's photograph that's done similar thing, you all say, oh, it's Lee Jeffries. Oh, a, we all know that. But what he's done is he's found his creative style. And he's working with that. He's creative process. By the way, this is another thing. If you think for one minute that this came out of camera, you're wrong. And that is where a lot of people are being duped into this thing. Uh, shot with a, this camera or shot with that lens. I find it quite fascinating when I read some people's comments and they say, what lens did you use? What camera? I must go get one of those. It is not going to give you the shot. You see, the camera is the brush in the artist's hands. The camera is simply... It's Lee Jeffries who sees the beauty within these and captures them the way his mind sees them. And that is where his process goes. Was there a building behind there or a brick wall behind these people? We don't know because Lee Jeffries has eliminated that out of the photograph so that you only see it. Let's go have a look at Nick Brunt. Nick Brunt's work is a wildlife photographer um, and his work, photographs are world acclaimed. Here's his 25 elephants. To hang, Quentin, to hang this photograph on your wall and you've got the print, 50,000 US dollars. Hmm. That's the price of this print. Wow. So of course, he had to make some more bucks. So off he went back to Kenya to go photograph his elephants and he took this shot. 
which is ah. 25 men with their tusks. So everybody who owned this photograph wanted to hang that photograph underneath it. But notice the style. His horizon line is exactly the same yeah. on both photographs, the clouds. But that is Nick Brandt's style. It's his signature. When you see these types of stuff, you know immediately it's Nick Brandt. Let's look at Peter Lick. He's overexposed, overcolorized images. He's, um, and when we look at this, we think, choose a lot of But he's the master of landscape photography. He does a lot of panoramics. I mean, even cutting the top of trees off. I mean, but people want to hang it. So Peter Link went and he did a photograph like this called um, uh, The Ghost or The Phantom. All of these, by the way, have all been edited and changed, especially this black and white one of these. Um, and this is called The Phantom, selling at 7.1 million US dollars sure. for one particular photograph. Now, if we equate that to Rand's, that's <laughs> 140 million Rand. We give up photography, Quentin. We, we just want shots <laughs> like that. But they didn't buy... Uh, dust inside of a cave. They bought Peter Lick because of his specific style, his way that he does things. You've got to have passion. That's important. This is my, this is my horses. This, uh, this is the same horse, uh, or not horse, same horse, but the horses that were, were in that forest. And it took me days to get close to these guys. And one day, just by luck, and you can see it was raining the whole time that I was there. I was sitting in the field and, and they came. You can see they wild by their manes and everything. And I shot that. But this didn't come like this out of camera. I had to add Martin Dudley's little touch to it and my style to it. And you know, guys, I'm not going to sell this print. I'm doing this for me. I want to put these things onto my walls, into my books, and my grandkids and kids to see what I do and the way I see things. You've got to have loads of patience. This game, I mean, not only on the shoot, but patience with yourself. I know it looks weird. And please, guys, don't believe that I took a ballerina to the top of Table Mountain and shot her because you would have fallen off the cliff. My whole idea here was simply to... Um, uh, I, I looked in the morning, I heard birds singing, and I thought, why aren't we like that, you know? And I'm not going to get some model just to stand on a rock. So I went and shot the top of Table Mountain, which I did before. I had these rocks, got my ballerina, put on. That's how we should actually enter the day and look at it. You see, we all look at things differently, especially me. A lot of people ask me, what do we do, I smoke? And what, what you know, <laughs> I don't. So yes, a ballerina on Table Mountain, you can imagine going up the cableway with a woman dressed like that. No, ballerina was captured separately, top of Table Mountain, some rocks, in order to just get what I wanted out of it. You see, we all look at things differently, each and every one of us. And I think that's what our audience, and, and we've only got a little A4 piece of paper to capture an image on and to draw attention to oneself. And what I think people want to see is actually the way you capture things. You see great photographs come up like dandelions, captured completely differently. And, but that is what you're seeing is a person's creative thing. As you see, a lot of guys say to me, but Martin, I don't know how, and I'm not sure how. But not knowing is actually when you can see things differently. It's when we as photographers look at things and we say, oh, yeah, we don't want to shoot that and not shoot this. When you don't know how, you can definitely work on that and get your own creative viewpoint in, in, into your own work. This is a lighthouse, um, which uh, Swakop lighthouse, which I photographed. And I um, worked on this particular image, nighttime on the left, daytime, and, and the central point being life itself, which is so twisted in many ways, and, and the light where sailors would actually sail to, to, to find solitude in, in life. And it's just sort of a creative image for me. And then the guys invited me to ballet. Now, I'm not a ballet photographer. In fact, I don't enjoy ballets at all. And I'll tell you why. is <laughs> because I don't like women poncing around in miniskirts and guys in tights. It's all, that don't work for me. And the music's not good. <laughs> and I went and, and they, they actually carried on for three different ballets. And uh, we were allowed to go shoot at these ballets. And eventually I went and I was absolutely gobsmacked how these people and their creative ability fill the stage with their grace and they smile and stand on their toe. It's absolutely incredible. And I, think I, I think I took 35 photographs because I was so taken back by their creative ability. That's their creative way. That 
when I looked at my photographs, I saw a static ballerina. And for me, they're not static, they're full of movement. So I decided to get a ballerina to do a particular dance, one particular move, and photograph her in that move, in this case, four moves, or four photographs as she turned into that move. And then put them together so that I can see the movement in that, in one particular photograph. Yes, a composite of the same dancer in four particular different turn of, of that turn, which I think this whole thing lasts just a little bit longer than two seconds as you move through there. But this is the way I want to see the ballerina. And, and she loved the photograph itself. You see, we've got to explore new ideas, record your thoughts, make notes, cell phone photographs I love is taking ideas. This is where I need to get back to it. This is a lovely tree. Um, I do little hand stick man drawings and, and notes and, and that type of thing so that I can remember the idea. Because as soon as that phone rings and it's the bank manager and it's the wife who wants to get something from the shop, the idea is gone gone forever and what you actually need to do is to record those ideas and, and on the weekend or, or when you've got some time go out and, and capture that and i mean there's some amazing photographs which can come out of your own god believe it or not we'll recognize these ideas and thoughts when time's coming and, and you can go out and do it so portrait shot of mine actually romeo and juliet this is how i see it two people in love but there's a barrier between them. And actually the barrier might just even be themselves. I don't know. But we can see the passion in the shot. We don't need to just always follow just a normal shot. By the way, they were clothed in my studio, okay? Otherwise my wife would slaughter me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the, you know, the police knocking, banging at the door. But that is my way of, of depicting. And they've been through their own physical battles, these two. And they wanted to show that in, in this particular shot. And that's what we came up with. Explore ideas. This is a, a fishing boat just outside, uh, just <clears throat> outside Hart Bay. And yes, the wave wasn't that big. And the fishing boat wasn't leaned that way. That's my interpretation. And the, the storm wasn't there. But I created this mood and this, this look in the photograph um, to, to, to depict what I actually saw on that particular day. You see, inspiration is the key to unlocking your creativity. You've got to be inspired by either somebody, by photographs, by different things. And, and that will actually lead, lead you to, to where you want to be. In this particular shot, I was inspired by some photos which came from a, a fellow photographer, somebody I know very well, um, uh, Evelyn Gibson, who, who photographed Cuba and um, the streets of Cuba. And I'd love to go shoot in Cuba, but I haven't had the chance. I'm work-wise and I'm so busy. Um, but that didn't mean I couldn't shoot like it. So this is a Cape Town. I took a, a nice street shot, worked on the photograph, switched on life, and then took this couple and put them into a rainstorm so that I could be inspired myself and, and create some form of work out of that. A great form, a great place um, to, to find inspiration is in Pinterest. And uh, I got Pinterest on my phone all the time and I, I, I find shots that I enjoy. People say, isn't that copying? Well, look at some art students going into the Louvre and into, and they study the masters. They look at things and they, they sketch them. Not to say they're going to become uh, Leonardo da Vinci or, or, or Rembrandt or anything like that. But we can learn from others just by looking at Im images and how the light would fall. It'll never be the same. And this is just forms of inspiration that you can get. I decided one day to take, I said, uh, you know, I challenged myself to some of these things. It's, uh, uh, ID photograph, simple, no smile, okay? Straightforward looking model, looking straight at me, take the shot. Now, what can I do with it to create my own style out of it? And in this particular case, I was listening to a song, I think it was Cindy Lauper or Madonna, which she's a material girl. And I then developed all these pieces of material, took a baseball, cut out the stitching and put it into her face. And I mean, every, uh, my wife, I want to try adopt the zip thing for my <laughs> wife. Um, but <laughs> I put that in specifically for her. Um, <laughs> but have fun with it. I mean, there's, this is all different pieces of material, lace, cotton, um, uh, nylon, and, and, and in order to, for me to get that. This one from the secretary bird, I, I love looking at saying, it's my, my version of a human secretary bird. Everything in it is a photograph, not hand drawn or anything like that. Those flowers in her face is from a photograph of flowers. That everything is part of my own photographs to, 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 to develop that. Then of course, the story of my son. 
I wanted to photograph my son. I needed to remember um, his battle. And his battle was he was, uh, this wasn't the cause of, his, of, his, of me losing him or his life, but his battle was heroin, 10, 12 years, a heroin addict. And I sat and watched my son deplete into nothing, into a human being which was eaten up by a drug. Was it his fault? Was it society's fault? I don't know. But I had to live with it. I needed to, to maybe remind myself of something then, a simple photograph was it. So I sat down with the ID photograph. This is not actually my son. This is a model that posed for me. I said, just look at me straight, ID photograph. And I cut the photograph up in Photoshop and then manually try to put all the pieces back together, leaving some pieces out. And it was okay. But it had all those black holes behind it. And one day I was driving past a, a grass vendor who was selling grass on the side of the road. And I, I jumped out and I said, how much for grass? But I don't want to put it in my car because it's full of sand and mud. So I turned the thing upside down with my cell phone. I captured that background weeds or roots image to put into the background of this photograph. You see, I had a visual note of what I wanted to do. And then I got that grass, put it in the back, and, and that's what led this photograph. Now, I've got an artwork of somebody who's left me, and I've got this to remind me of some process that I went through. Is it going to replace these other photographs? Yes, well, it's going to be part of it, part of a life story. And what I'm trying to say is we get inspired by even moods and, and different things in our lives that we get. You see, it's a process of discovering yourself, a process of discovering what you can do. We've got to understand that when... If we look at children, they, I mean, ever met a child that's not creative, plasticine, painting on the walls? I mean, that's why we stop being creative. You keep being told, no, don't draw on the walls and don't do this. Um, I also ask people, I say, can you draw? And they say, no, I can't draw. I didn't say, can you draw like Leonardo da Vinci? I'm saying, can you draw? Can you just draw a little stick man? Of course we can. And if you drew enough, you'd become a very good sketch artist. We've got to go out there and, and allow yourself to explore yourself. Um, I actually even bought wax crayons and put them on my table because I love the smell of wax crayons. I'm not a good wax crayon artist, but to bring back those things. You see, we're all on this path to discover more and more of our own creative process. Will it end? I don't think so. I think at 90, I'm still going to be shooting the way that I want to shoot and, and those types of things. You know, you're going to be, got to be who you are. I was watching a program about uh, a, a, a crime program, and they say it's a schizophrenic. And I said to myself, but aren't we all schizos? Aren't we all different people? First of all, we are fathers, or uh, I'm a father or mothers. Then we get to work, and then we are manager or director. Then we get to our wives or girlfriends, and then we are lover. We all are different schizos all in one package. And I thought, how can I photograph that? So once again, get to my Photoshop. And um, try to find yourself a bold model. Okay, that's very, very difficult. Okay, and I went and photographed paint peeling off of, a, off of a, a, um, a drain pipe and inserted it in the photograph so I could show the separation of one person and the other. This whole process took me about two months to get it through my mind of what I wanted to do. Is it photography? Is it art? I don't know. So I had fun with it and it's all made up of photographs. See, tools can change your perception. And what we've got to understand is that we've got to rethink our photography process at the same speed as change. It is changing. I've just been given a new phone by one of the leading phone manufacturers. Let me tell you, in five to 10 years, I don't think we're going to have SLRs. I don't think we're going to have lenses. It is incredible the technology that it's moving at. Kids are on, on, on all these things. We've got to move at that pace. You've got to study more deeper and deeper. Photography is made up of a few things. Number one, capturing the image, knowing your equipment, knowing the lighting, and knowing how to edit. I used to edit in a dark room, and now I'm editing on Photoshop. It took a big change, but that's the way the things are. We've got to make things more visually appealing and look better. This is not the way we were trained as photographers. No, it's not. But we've got to be constantly changing with time and constantly changing the way we look at things and how we actually work there. Martin, um, just the, with, yes. with the, what you just said now about, um, you know, the, the editing and, and that sort of thing, um, Coco was asking um, uh, if, um, if we know the, 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 the post-production better, the road to shooting creatively becomes easier, surely. 
Yes, definitely. And you know what actually happens is you start shooting with the creative mind, with your editing process in, in mind. For example, I shoot underexposed in all my work. I actually shoot one, sometimes one and a half f-stops lower because I know my creative ability. So I'm looking through the viewfinder and understanding how I'm going to have to work on this image later. And yes, if you understand, and that's the process. I mean, back in the day, a photographer uh, used to shoot. Then he came to his darkroom, and his darkroom ability was as good as what his photography had to do. The masters, the Ansel Adams and all of that, were great photographers, but they were ex very, very good in that darkroom. That's where they mastered it. So you've got to understand is that this process you're on is not only capturing brilliant images, getting good images, but understanding how to process and I'll say this once and I'll say it a million times. Bring a crap photograph into Photoshop or whatever program you're using. You're going to still have a crap photograph. It cannot fix the rubbish. You've got to have good photography to edit good photography. You can take the ordinary and turn it into extraordinary. You can't take the rubbish and turn it into a piece, a piece of gold. No, it's like putting sprinkles onto dog poo. You're not going to get it. But... If you sit down and you know your style, you'll be able to edit in that style and you'll find that flow of what you want to do. This is just some, I mean, there's, there's very little editing done in here except in skin smoothening and, and balancing your light. And this is just some of the work that I've done. I love black and white and I love one light working with black and white just to get the shape of, of the face and just to show that I am also a normal human, okay? <laughs> Old people, I love photographs. I always have, always love photographing old people. I found this guy in the garden one day. Um, after the gardening, uh, well, I saw him gardening and the following Saturday came to my house. I took him off to the studio and shot him. I paid him his modeling fee. I think I paid him 800 grand. You won't believe it. Every Saturday, phone me. Can we go do photos? Can we go do photos? <laughs> because he thought this was an easy money making thing. Just sit there for an hour and get your 800 bucks, you know. But I pay every model. I, I insist on paying them for their time. And, and, and this I see as my models. Okay, the, the chimpanzee in the Janusburg Zoo, um, everybody wrote to me about Kenya and, uh, and, and the, <laughs> I hacked through the trees there to get this chimpanzee shot. I said, no, Janusburg Zoo, you know. Um, then, of course, this one, the flamingo, you saw the earlier flamingo. Um, I love that difference. I love having the darker background. People say, yeah, but it's not natural. Well, go to the Janusburg Zoo. The lake is black. All I've done is darken the back and put a cloud in there. And, and people liked it. I liked it. But I think, Quentin, that's the thing, is I'm not selling the work. I'm not asking a client, what would you like? I'm doing it for me, what I enjoy. And if I enjoy that, great, I'm allowed to do it. I, I put up my work and I do get a lot of flack, flack about the um, composites and, and all of this type of thing. In fact, I say to a lot of people, go back into history. In 1860, composites started being done on, on film and, and that it's part of a creative process. Not saying this for everybody. Um, I, I don't say it's necessarily what, something that I do all the time, but it's up to you and your creative process and what you enjoy in your photography. This is just a, another ballerina shot, a really heavy composite, a really heavy style to it and, and all of that, and, and people enjoyed it. So yeah, I thought they may just put it as part of the, the presentation. We're trying to do something Russian. Um, I love getting strands of material. Isn't it strange how red and women just associate together um, and, and, and it just works in, in color. And of course, that dark blue sort of background of the Russian type look to it. And once again here, um, uh, I do not shoot with red backgrounds or red material. I shoot in total gray. So this background would have been totally gray. The material that she's wearing there, totally gray. And I just color graded that in, in Photoshop. Okay. And then um, I, I felt like becoming, I had to go shoot a whole lot of work at Comic-Con. And um, I was intrigued and I thought, let me do my own comic con. So I went and bought some comics, uh, stole some from my son, tore them up, cut holes into them and ended up with what I would want is a Batman mask from actually a comic book and um, worked on that to, to get this particular shot or this particular style and thoroughly enjoyed the process. The problem was afterwards, um, the super glue that I used in order to stick this glue on top, the model and me were best of friends. But uh, <laughs> but uh, and it, take, it was a great way of, of doing them and yes super uh, super woman as you can see the torn comic book all over but just an idea and a thought and lovely to have been put it onto camera and, and to develop it that way so martin right. just another question yes. there 
Um, so, so does does it start with um, uh, with the with the idea, the uh, and then you go and shoot for it, or or does it uh, sometimes work the other way? It does work the other way as well. I prefer the idea, the way you guys, commercial photographers, work. Is I like the idea that I walk into a meeting, we want to shoot this car, we want to shoot this product. What do you want out of it? And okay, in that case, the client is saying what they want out of it. But our minds are at work of how we're actually going to do the shoot. And we, I sit down and I work and I say, would that work? And remember, it's, it's a mindset. It hasn't been shot yet. It, it, it's, it's just sit, sitting down and saying, so it comes with all of this complications. So I prefer, before I go to anything, if I'm going on holiday to go shoot, I explore the region where I'm going to be. I find spots where they are. So I've done research into it that I know what I'm going to go shoot. A lot of times at Pinterest, I put the actual photograph, which I enjoy so much. It might have been taken in Italy. But that is what I like. I like the lowness of the shot. And I've planned my mind that when I get there, yes, it does change. I mean, with this, I thought water and comic book would stick easily on the model. It didn't. And things, and so you work in it. But you've sort of got an idea and a mindset involved in order to actually go ahead and create that. So, but then, of course, there are shots where it works straight away. I mean, the whole thing is just there. And, and wow, we've got a nice shot out of this and it's completely different. But I, I prefer to plan for what I'm going to do and, and make notes of the ideas and thoughts and, and, and to, to try to get the, that work out of it. Cool. Thank In you. this case, um, lead me not into temptation was one of those. What am I going to do to actually depict that particular verse? Well, how am I going to depict that? Lead me not into temptation. Now, I could have had a bottle of KWV walking down there, but that wouldn't have worked. So I thought to myself, right, I don't do many nude shoots. I'm, I'm not really into that. It's, not, it's like ballet for me. It's, it's not what I want to do. But in order to get this shot done, I asked the model to pose like that for me, told her the story and, and went. But the archway wasn't there. She was shot inside of a studio. But with this type of thing in mind, I went through Johannesburg and photographed some beautiful archways and um, none of them worked. And this was actually at a wedding venue, which I went and shot this to, in order to get this done. The mind idea wasn't stars and moons. It was a planet at the back, and um, which was actually cut out of, of a cloud, if you look at that carefully, in order to get this and all those complementary colors of blues and oranges and yet. I think it's important to understand I haven't had any artistic training, nothing. If I draw, I draw stick men. But what I do get is an idea and a thought process. And I'm trying to work to get that all there. Do they work all the time? No, of course not. Do all shoots work out great? No. But it's a lovely way to explore what you are as a creative and, and what you want to be um, as, as, as that. Um, so, yes. Sure, that's um, fantastic. Uh, really, really fantastic. The, 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 uh, there's a lot of people you're going to have to go and send um, uh, checks to. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're very complimentary and, and, uh, and been, you know, certainly been saying that when they have uh, had uh, you know, uh, lessons from you and, uh, and that it's, uh, it's certainly been uh, very well worth it. So that's, that's awesome. You've got a, a big, big following there. Um, oh, yeah. no, thank you. Thanks. I think the you know there's there's always going to be that difference between um, you know the the sort of commercial uh, photography and oh. and the, the fine art side of things, and I, I think that um, you know when when it comes to things like uh, family shoots and um, uh, you know the more sort of lifestyle type things, I think there's a lot of room for people to to explore this type of thing within that you know because it's it's not a situation where you know the the shoe has to be the right color against this background and enough space on the one side so that you, we can have some text there, et cetera. Um, you know, you can, you can definitely, you know, become more interpretive and, and then, you know, develop your own style so that people come to you for that style. So I think this, um, this presentation has, has, has been very, very cool as far as that goes, because it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of, you know, given insight to, uh, to the audience that this kind of thing can be done. Um, what I really liked about the, the images at the beginning where, you know, you had the, like the giraffe and the elephants, et cetera. I think the, the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the blending and, and the way that the, you know, the, the, 
all the separate images were, were brought together, I think was done really, really nicely. I, I, I really appreciate the, you know, the fact that, um, you know, it wasn't a case of some of them were a bit more contrasty and others were, uh, you know, a little flatter. It, it all just felt really, really comfortable um, together. And I, I think that, that is, it's not a, it's not an easy skill to, uh, you know, to, to develop. And I, I think those are, are really, really fantastic. I really enjoyed those, uh, those ones. Yeah. I also um, thank you very much. I also say to people, you walk up to somebody and you say, what do you do for occupation? He says, I'm a writer. I think photography is in that same realm, is that you get somebody who writes music, you get somebody who writes poetry, you get somebody who's a journalist. There are so many different realms within this. And to try to, to put them all and put them into, together, each one of us form our own parts of it. And I've worked with a lot of commercial photographers to, to hone their skills and to, to get better ways out of things. I mean, just removing spot healing and, and all these types yeah. of things that are needing glamour. So, um, yes, but of course, you still have your own particular likes and enjoyments. And, and it's been great. I, I love the whole field of it. I mean, even people who do rugby photography. Yeah. But that, yeah, but it's good fun. No, that's that's fantastic. So, uh, have you do you ha do um, workshops and and mentorships and that sort of thing? Do you have a, a page on um, your on your website that? Um, I no, no, actually, I don't. Um, as I say, I've been uh, with with the with the daytime job, and that is, is and especially now with, with what's happened now recently. But it is going that way. I do do a lot of online classes with select clients that I, I work with. Uh, as I say, that's locally and internationally, where I actually work with with particular particular uh, client but if people want to they can just contact me on my on my email or they can uh, on messenger on, on Facebook by all means and um, uh, they can just leave me a note and I'll certainly get back to them and we can discuss what we can do to, to improve their way or their photography in such a way and please understand is I'm not going to come in and post all my stuff on to you. All I'm going to try to do is to find out what you enjoy and try to work around what you do in order to get the photographs you want out. Absolutely, and I think that, uh, that uh, you know that type of thing is it's always good to get input from as many different people as possible. You know, because you, you sure. uh, it's it's um, it just gives you so much more to work with when when it comes to creating uh, and, and refining your own style, etc. Um, uh, sure. But I, if you know, I, I keep saying that I'm going to be doing this page on the Hunters of Light website where I'm going to be putting everyone's tutorials and and uh, you know mentoring details, etc. And it will ha it will come, I promise. Um, but it, you know, I, I certainly would like to um, certainly put something up there for uh, for you because I think there's a lot of people that that can learn a hell of a lot about um, you know composites and 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 blending and and putting things together. But even even you know uh, when you're shooting it, to make sure that the light is coming from the right angle and the right intensity, etc. It's most it's definitely putting it together because it it really does go to make up uh, the image at at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you've got to shoot it right. That, that's the first thing. Is in, you're shooting it wrong. It's easy to, everybody thinks cut out something and put in another image works. It doesn't. If they're not shot correctly, um, then composites aren't going to work or they're going to be fa false in yeah. the sense. But um, so the shooting is important. But you know, just the, the style on, on how to do black and white. Um, you know, there are seventeen ways. I know all seventeen in Photoshop to convert a photograph into black and white. What are the best ways? All seventeen of them, yes. depending on what you want to get out of it. Exactly. Um, they, they differ, but depending on what you want to get out of it. Some people prefer that way. Some people this way. So it depends, and and we sort of work around those those types of things. You know, uh, it's strange. They, do you know that on the keyboard, there are four and a half thousand shortcuts just on your keyboard? And I mean, we can, that's why it's a good money making process. I actually teach one button per class. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what it is, is a, it's a process. It's like learning how to take photographs. We've got to understand is that just taking photographs, is not going to cut it. We've got to go into editing it. And you've got a lifetime to do it. I mean, that's what's so great about it is for the novice photographer, the non-commercial photographer, you've got a long time and you slowly work and learn these techniques. But, but, but And I'm not going anywhere. People can write to me and I'll give them help wherever I can. Um, if they want a class, we can do something, see what we can do. But importantly is to enjoy it. That's yeah. the passion in it. That's what, what we love about it. And, and we shouldn't lose that passion. Absolutely. And I think the, you know, even though you have, um, uh, you know, the, the, the commercial verse, uh, you know, hobbyist, uh, fine art uh, type feel, the same editing post-production skills that, that you would have developing, you know, the work that you've done 
are equally yeah. important in, in a commercial sense, you know, um, oh, whether it's a skin yeah. retouching, you know, uh, putting in different elements, et cetera. It's, it's, it all yeah. just goes to refining your, uh, you know, your, your, your images at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, I think we need to, we need to talk and, and maybe set up some sort of a, a workshop, et cetera. I think there'll be quite a few people that, that will be interested, yeah. even if it is just a, a, a zoom, uh, type, uh, you know, means. Sure. so, so we'll chat about that. Um, but for now, thank uh, you. just a huge thank you to you. Thank you so much. Um, if you if you get a chance, go and check out the the, the comments. Uh, been a lot of complimentary uh, comments there for for your work and a lot of support. So okay. yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, no, uh, Martin. No, thanks and, and thanks for what you're doing. And and you know, if I can just leave off by saying, all that we ask in return, any photographer, is a comment, not yeah, or a like. If you like the work, post a comment because I think that is our inspiration as well. Is do you like the work? Are we on the right track? So I try to comment as much as I can. But Quentin, thanks to you and thanks for, for all that you've done. I know it's not an easy job. This must have taken up your whole lockdown. Um, to Absolutely. Even more and, and sleepless night. But God bless you. Thank you very much for what you've done. Thanks, Martin. I appreciate it. Have a good afternoon. Hey? Okay, you too. Cheers. Bye-bye.